Y'all are too kind, too kind. <laughs> okay, we're going to uh, start off uh, with our sermon today, and it's coming from a familiar passage. is Exodus uh, 33. It's really long. You ready, Mike? Exodus 33 and 8. It's so long. No, Exodus, the first one. Exodus 33. There it is. I hope you guys could take all the, how much we're gonna read today. It's so long. Okay, so here we go. Exodus 33 and 18. One of my favorite verses. Moses is having a dialogue with God. And in this dialogue, um, God, first, was, first God was like, you know what, I can't do it with these people, they too much, you know what? Let's just start all over, because they, t- they doing the most. And God's like, well, you know, kind of like your reputation out here, God. Like, if you bring us out to this desert and kill us, everybody's going to be like, what's up with your God? So he was like, you, you know, let's not do that. Let's do a plan B. How about, you know, you just help us and, you know, bear with us. And God was like, okay, I'll help you. I'll send an angel to go with you all to the new, you know, the promised land. I can't personally go, because I've been killed, y'all. This is my version, the parallel version. Y'all can read it yourself to see the correct translation. But uh, he said, I, I, I'll probably kill y'all, so I'm just going, you go. And this is God, Moses begging God, like, God, if you don't go, if your presence doesn't go, I don't want no part of it. I don't, I don't want to go. If your glory, if you don't come with us, I don't want it. Which is interesting because God, if God were to offer us our wildest dreams and say, you can have it, but I won't go, we might just be like, well, okay, does it involve money? Because I'll just see you on Sundays. But he said, no, God, I won't go if you don't go. And so God was like, okay, I'll, I'll honor that. They're having this dialogue. And then Moses hits this verse. And out of all the things Moses had already seen, the burning bush, the Red Sea, the plagues, he got, Moses has seen a lot of things until this point, but he says this one prayer, Lord, please show me your glory. Show me your glory. This is the one prayer. He could ask for a lot of things. God, show us all where the gold is, Lord. Show us where it is, and we will never be the same. Show us your love. Show us your, your faithfulness. But he's, he wanted specifically, Lord, show me your glory. So today I want to talk about being rooted on purpose. Rooted on purpose. So y'all remember back when we were kids? I don't know how many people grew up with a sibling. I was the only child, and I had cousins. How many people had cousins? And how many of those people tend to get, get on your nerves sometimes when, when you was growing up? Y'all remember when y'all got into like a little squabble, and somehow you accidentally got hit in the, or I won't say accidentally, you got hit in the squabble. And you went to go tell. Anybody remember this? You went to go tell, and you're like, they, they hit me. Remember that? And then the person, the perpetrator, comes to the adult figure and say, I, I was just playing. It was an accident. Y'all remember that? Or maybe y'all was that kid. <laughs> Whoever, I'm that one could be y'all. But that person was like, I was just playing. I didn't mean to hurt him. It was an accident. Y'all remember that? And then what was our response? It wasn't an accident. You did it. You did it on purpose. Y'all remember that? You did it. And you knew they didn't do it on that. You saw them when they hit you. It wasn't no accident. They meant it. They wound back and did it real hard. You did it on purpose. And this is the, this is the, the heart I feel that we should have in this last quarter of the year. We almost, we almost done. This is October. We're in the last quarter. We only have three more months left. And we don't want an accidental faith. I want a faith on purpose. I don't want to, I guess, or I hope. No, a faith on purpose. How many want a faith on purpose? 
I want, to pay, I want a faith on purpose. Now, we are revisiting our theme. Anybody remember our theme from January? This year has gone by so fast. Our theme in January was rooted in glory, and we're going to do it through spiritual disciplines. It was our intention to do one every month, but I don't know. I just woke up, and it was October, so I don't know what happened. So we're going we gonna to catch everybody up in these last three months of the year and get back into our spiritual disciplines before we get into Advent. Advent starts the Sunday after Thanksgiving. We're on this calendar. We're on this church calendar. We're moving, all right? We're moving. We're moving. So back in January, I preached a sermon called Rooted in Glory, from Exodus 33, and we learned, as Lauren said last week, about God's glory and that God's glory equals God's character. So when we say, Lord, show me your glory, we're saying, God, show me your character. I won't recap that because that will be too long and we'll be here until the football games come on, and we don't want that. So, <laughs> so go back and look at January's messages if you want a more in-depth detail on that. But God's character... When he says, show me your character, it means show me your glory. And God answered Moses back and he said, I will allow my goodness, check this out, to pass before you. And I will proclaim my name. He said, I am the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. When Moses asked God, show me your glory, he wasn't necessarily talking about the goosebumps and all the tinglies. He was saying, God, show me your character. And God's like, okay, bet. I'll show you who I am. These are all the things that I am. So therefore, if we want to be rooted in glory or rooted in God's character, our prayer is, God, show us more of your character. We need to see God in a new perspective. Amen? Amen. Because if we don't, we will continually yield to the lies and the slander of the enemy who wants to tell you how bad God is to you. The enemy wants to tell you how much God does not love you, how much God has forgotten about you. God does not answer your prayers. God is not faithful. God is not kind. Anybody ever heard those voices before? God does not know. Y'all ain't going to leave me up here by myself. How many, anybody... Heard those voices before that you're not worthy, you're not able. Then we start saying we got imposter syndrome and we got all these things because God can't be that good to me. Does God know who I am and what I've done? There's no way that God still loves me. Anybody, any honest people in here? So, and some of us are still on the fence about God and that's cool. That's fine. This, we want this to be a place where you could come with all your questions You could come with all your confusion. You could come with, I don't know, I tried church before. This is your place. But then I have another group in here who've had experience with God. Anybody on that group? That you know, that you know, that you know, that you can't make me doubt him. I can't, you could tell me till you blue in the face that ain't no God, but I know too much. I've lived too much. I've seen too much. There's some things I just can't explain. I don't know how my life got saved. I don't know how I'm not in jail right now. I don't know how that person not killed. I don't know how. You can't make me doubt God. I don't care how bad it get. I don't care what it look like. And I can tell, I don't know what care what my bank account look like. You can't tell me that God is not real. I've experienced too much. And so this is where we are at. God, show us as a congregation more of your character. Because if we knew more about God's character, I promise you wouldn't be able to sit in your seat during worship time. I promise if you just started thinking about the songs and the words that we're singing and how it hit your life, some yo your arms would just go up and you didn't even mean for them that you like, what is happening? You can't make me doubt him. So when we said in January, we wanted to be rooted. Y'all remember that? We was like, it's a new year. We out of the pandemic. We being rooted. Y'all remember that? Anybody was here? Ooh, we was going to be rooted, child. Rooted is a verb. Think about that. 
Being rooted is a verb. It's actually an action. It actually requires intention. Y'all gonna hear this word a lot, this whole sermon, intention. To be rooted is to be established deeply and firmly. Can you please show the picture of rooted? This is what it looks like to be rooted. See, uh, you know, we be concerned about the little outside, our fruit looking good and all delicious and yielding stuff. That's cool. That's if we see that, that's, that's beautiful. But behind every tree that is blooming and yielding fruit, behind every tree that's really producing in life is a root system that goes deep and wide. Y'all remember that song, Deep and Wide? <laughs> deep and wide and this is what it looks like for our spiritual life to be rooted to be rooted to be rooted to be rooted have a healthy root system and let me just tell you with all that's going on in the world right now ciao it's a lot happening. There are wars, literally wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes everywhere, conflicts, racism, oppression, things coming to light, folks still acting crazy in the White House. It's a lot happening. It's a lot happening. More to come in 2024. It's a lot happening. So somewhere in your life, you're gonna have to make a decision that I need a rooted faith. Because a shallow faith will make you easily plucked. You're easy, you're susceptible, susceptible to be plucked. You're able to just be rooted, and now you'll just, when you're shallow, you have doubts about God. Is God real? Why would God let this happen? Why did all the babies die in the hospital? Why are there all these things when you have a shallow faith, you're easily plucked? Like those, like those little weeds that try it in your garden. Not the deep, some of them really be, whew, you gotta work for them. But you know, you, know, you know what I mean, them little shallow ones, you could just pull up easily. This is how we are usually. Uh, let's look at James 1. I hope y'all taking notes. Y'all need to get in the habit of, let's, take, let's get in the habit of taking notes. Don't just take my word for it. Take some notes. Go back and read it later. James 1, 6 and 7. It says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Remember I said if we have shallow faith, it means that it causes doubt. Because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea. Look at you. Blown, tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. How many people, I have been there so many times, you feel just blown and tossed by life. Just one way to the other way, one side to the other, to the wind just having its way with you. You're turning around, turning about, being tossed and driven. Anybody felt like that before? Yeah. We've all been here before, but I got a cure for that for you. I got, I got help. Help is on the way if this is your season of, in life. Being rooted is going to help you not to be blown about. You'll be like that tree planted by rivers of water. So we said we wanted to be rooted in God through spiritual disciplines. Okay, let's just do a refresher about spiritual disciplines. He put up the slide about our disciplines. There are different, you, you can, there's lots of ways, a lot of people have, uh, a lot of scholars have different commentaries about what spiritual disciplines are, but there are inward disciplines. Meditation, prayer, fasting, and study. We, 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 we did good at this at the beginning of the year. We do our fast. We're together. We got our prayer going. We have outward disciplines, simplicity, solitude, submission, and service. And then we have corporate disciplines, things we do together as a church body, confession, worship, guidance, and celebrations. These are things we want to root ourselves in in this last quarter of the year. And every Sunday, we're going to be talking about a different aspect of these so that we can really lean into our faith. Now, I almost lost half of y'all when I said the word discipline. I already know. I felt, I felt the spiritual eye roll. 
because when we usually hear the word discipline, what do you think about? Punishment. Y'all thinking about belts and, and switches and paddles and all the <laughs> racetracks. What else? What? Shoes, chanclas, anybody had the remote control, anything nearby? Not, not the phone book, dang. <laughs> So as soon as we hear that, we automatically think, oh, Lord, discipline, punishment, I'm in trouble, demerits, I don't know, whatever you was thinking about. But, or some of us think about, okay, discipline, and you start feeling guilty about the lack of discipline in your life. Like, dang, I was supposed to go to the gym, I'm playing Planet, Planet Fitness, $10, and they just taking all my little $10 every month, and I ain't stepped one foot in there. Or we think about how we want to eat better, and oh, I just keep doing the same thing. I got to add more greens to my diet. Or we start thinking about, you know, waking up, oh, I got to wake up earlier. I got to get some discipline in my life. You're like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? the things, right? So that's why, you know, spiritual discipline doesn't really appeal to us. We're like, uh, then we have to, right? It's like going to get a shot at the doctor, like, uh, I guess I need it, but I don't want it, right? But let me give you a better definition of discipline. Discipline is a quality of being able to behave and work in a controlled way, which involves obeying particular rules or standards, so it helps us to act in a controlled way. You know why we need this? Because this flesh that we live in, is gets out of control. This flesh, whew, it's out of control, baby. If you don't put some parameters and some guardrails around this thing, it's insatiable. Just think about, no matter what you get that you like and you get it, you can never have enough of it. Like you keep wanting it. Like it's, it's, it's a bottomless pit. It's never ending. Like it's, you can never satisfy this flesh. You never say like, no, that's enough cookies. Like you just keep doing it. You keep going to Starbucks. Should I stop? I don't want to get too much deeper. No, no, I'm okay. I'm going to stop. <laughs> but discipline, discipline helps keep guardrails on us. Gives us parameters gives a boundary. That's why fasting is so good. Fasting tells you, you know what, body, you are not in control. The Holy Spirit is in control. You don't tell me what to do. You ain't going to keep giving me a headache every time I don't drink coffee. You know what we going to do? I'm going I'm to, we shutting all that down. You're not in control. You have to tell your mind, mind, you're not in control. Feelings, you don't control me. I am controlled by the word of God. I am controlled by the Holy Spirit. I am controlled by disciplines. So this is why we need spiritual disciplines. I'm almost out your way. This is why we need them. First of all, we need spiritual. I hope you're writing this down because y'all ain't going to remember this on Wednesday and you're going to be in the thick of it. You're going you to wish you had some notes. Just saying, come prepare it next time. First of all, we need spiritual disciplines because it's not for God, it's for us. Spiritual disciplines, we're not doing these things to win God's approval. Like if I do these things, I'll get a gold star from God. Or God will finally love me. I'll earn God's approval once I do this checklist. No, 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 this is not what this is for. This is not for works. I got to do more things. Well, some of y'all, we look at this list like, ooh, if I can't add nothing, not one more thing to my calendar, I don't have it. I don't got capacity for it. No, this is not about adding more things. This is not about performance. It's not about works. We do this through grace, and we do this through God's help, right? So it's not for, it's not for God. You're not doing these things for God. You're doing this for yourself. For us, just like, you know how many people go to the doctor? Anybody got a doctor? Anybody? We have any doctors? In? We all go to the doctor. Do you know, you're, you know your, your doctor is practicing medicine, <laughs> Y'all know, y'all do know that, right? I hate to bust your bubble if you thought that your doctor was like the expert. I mean, kinda. I got a nurse in the house. She probably could tell us stories, child. They're just practicing. They're not, they're just like this and this, and this is gonna be the theme of what we're talking about. We need to practice our faith. 
We don't always have it down. Even if we're experts in some area, we're continually practicing. Just like when you go to that doctor with an ailment, they don't really know. They're like, well, we just going, we going to find, we going to do some things that, you, let's just try this. Any doctor ever told you that? Well, let's just try this and we'll see how it reacts to you. You over here playing with my life. Right? So we're, we're practicing. Next thing, why do we need spiritual discipline? Because... It allows us to stay spiritually sharp and keen. Come on, y'all got to get this. We need to be spiritually sharp and clean. You know, the, in, in the street, they say you got to keep your head on the swivel. Yeah. Ah, you know, when you walk, hey, don't just be walking like this or that. You're going to get knocked over the head. So why we know that in the physical, but we don't know that spiritually? We got to be spiritually keen. We got to be sharp. Bruce Lee, Lee said we got to be like water. And we just as rigid when we come to the deal. We got to, that ain't the way it's been doing it. And we don't want to move. God said that them people was a stick neck people. That, that is a name. God was like, you know what y'all is? God had, God had clap back. He was like, you know what y'all, God had roast. You know what y'all is? Y'all stiff neck. That's what you are. But that's a horrible accusation. You can't be fluid. You can't move with the things of God. First Timothy, first Timothy four, seven, write this down in the amplified version. It says, but have nothing to do with irreverent folklore or silly myths. On the other hand, what? Discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness. Look at this, keeping yourself spiritually fit. I didn't get no amens. Amen, amen. Keeping yourself spiritually fit. We are spiritually out of shape. It's true. Me too. You ever try to go up some stairs or do something you used to do? Like, oh, let me just do. And you'd be like, oh, child. Hold on. Be right there. I never forget. I had to run for a ferry one time to tell me, oh, I, I dang near missed that boat. I was like, hold the boat, please. <laughs> hold it. Out of shape. But isn't that how we are in the spirit sometimes? We can't hardly go through nothing without, whoo, hold on. They talking about me. Oh, no. I can't do this. <sighs> they say I got 15 days to pay a bill. I can't do it. Where is God? We out of shape. Any little thing get to us. We ready to quit. I'm done. Can't do it. I tried. Like when you go to that little test class, you ever go to a test class? You be like, ooh, that's too much. A little step. So somebody, I can't do those. I'll be going this way. They be going the other way. It's too much. We, that's how we can be in the spirit. I'm out of shape. That's why we need spiritual disciplines. Get us in shape. We can be sharp and keen, be able to withstand, be able to persevere. Everybody loves fruit of the spirit. Be like, oh, Lord, give me the fruit of the spirit, right? Y'all like the spirit. But you know one of them, you know what one of them is? Nobody be shouting over. Long suffering. I never heard nobody get on the mic. Let's shout. Long suffering. We live in joy. Peace, we be all long suffering. You gotta be in some spiritual shape to withstand some long suffering. When we be like, Jesus, where are you? I prayed last week. Never mind. Getting us in spiritual shape. This is why we need these disciplines. One, one, another one, to guard against spiritual laziness. I'm sorry if this is like a one, two, boom, boom, but I got it first. So if I get it, y'all going to get it. Remember the group whoopings? If I'm getting a whooping, y'all getting a whooping too. Hebrews 6, to guard against spiritual laziness. It says, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Somebody say fully realized. Woo! We do not want you to become what? 
but to in, but to imitate those who those who through faith and patience inherit what is promised. What a great verse. What a great verse. We do not want you to become lazy. Laziness. It's so easy for us to get lazy. But spiritual disciplines gives us agency over our own faith. Come on, we need agency over our own faith. God's not going to do everything for us. News break. Can I, I, I hate to pop your bubble. God's not going to do everything for us. We have to partner with God with some things. Just like anyone works with young people or you have a child or you've been an auntie or uncle or a god mom or god son. After a while and them kids start asking you stuff that they could do on their own, you'd be like, um, what's wrong with your feet? What's wrong with your hands? Like, there's a mom, can you just hand me out the kitchen? Huh? God wants to give us that same agency. Why do we been, God, I need more peace. I need more joy, please. God's like, these are things that's already inside of you. I've already given this to you. God puts us in situations sometimes that we can use our own agency. That we have to get up and get it for ourselves. Just like that little child, we will spoil a child to death if we do everything for them. At some point, you know, and it hurts sometimes. You got to let them go through little lessons like, no, go ahead. And you know they're going, it's a horrible plan. And you know it's going to be terrible. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and try it. If you like it, I love it. And you got to watch them go through the stage. But they're learning. You have agency. This is what God wants to do for us. God wants to partner with us. So we have to guard against laziness. I do it when I did. Oh, you know what? That's why we need the old saints back. They said 99 and a half just won't do. This was the tenacity they had in their faith that I'm going to do my best. I'm going to, I, I am going with all out intentions. 99, not going to cut it. I'm doing all I can to sharpen myself, to make myself spiritually fit, to make myself not be lazy in the spirit. Because everything you do in life, if you want to be good at, it takes practice. Athletes, it takes practice. It still amazes me that Steph Curry is one of the greatest shooters in NBA history, but he takes over 300 to 500 shots a day. What? That's a lot, and he's naturally gifted. He could be like, oh, I got this. But something about practice. Anybody play sports before on a team? We had, how, practice was when? How, every day, except for weekends. And what were we working on? Fundamentals. They didn't just say, show up for the game, it'll be fine. So we understand these things in the natural. We have to transfer these same principles into our spiritual life. Everything we want to do in our spiritual life, it takes practice. I don't know how to pray. Well, practice. We sound like Alan, Alan Iverson in here. I don't know how to love people. Well, I'm just so short-tempered. I need some patience. Well, my mind is all over the place. Maybe I should just do some meditation because that takes, we have to practice these things. Practice. Put your faith into work. We, anything you do, it requires always revisiting the fundamentals. Any athlete will tell you that. Any cook will tell you that. Anyone who so name any hobby. Name anything you love to do, you always have to go back to the fundamentals. How do I do this? Okay, revisiting, sharpening my skills, doing this over and over again. We use this in every area of life except for our spiritual lives. Our spiritual walk is where we really need it because it'll help us to mature. This is my last point. It's going to help us to mature. Somebody say mature. We have to have this agency. We have to mature in Christ. We have to mature in Christ. Salvation is free, but growth is intentional. Salvation is free. But we have to grow intentionally in our faith. 
So we have to come to the point where we're saying, you know what? No more adult tantrums. No more spiritual tantrums. No more me being spoon fed. I hope Pastor talk about something good today because who? No more this being the only connection you have with God on a Sunday. No, we're putting, we're taking agency, we're being intentional, and spiritual disciplines will help us grow in these things, will help us grow in the things of God. So do you ever wonder why it seems like your faith is not working? Like, I tried the things, I'm going to church, I don't understand, I'm not having the same experiences everybody else is having. Well, if you want to find out what's wrong with a sick tree, you always have to check the roots. Because damaged roots can cause the buds and the twigs to die immediately. It weakens the plants. It, the plant becomes uh, slow and it shows the declines, uh, symptoms of decline. And it lacks vigor and, re, and, and is reduced in its growth. So do you want to be able to persevere? Do you want less anxiety? Do you want less fear and doubt? Then we have to get rooted. Our last verse is in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17. Please write this down. Or bookmark it, put it in your phone. It says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, who trust is in, whose trust is the Lord's. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when he comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious. It does not cease to bear fruit. What a beautiful verse. Lord, let it be so of our lives. Just like Moses when he said, Lord, show me your glory. You know why God could give him, why God could show him God's glory. You know why God answered that prayer? Because Moses had the intention of going up that hill. He walked up that hill. He met God at the top of a mountain. God's like, you know what? If you can put some intention into your faith, if you could take some intentional time to meet with me, I will show you great and mighty things. So this is our prayer. Every Sunday until Advent, we're going to be talking about spiritual disciplines. I want you to talk, think about those verses. Think about um, those disciplines. You could even Google spiritual disciplines. Begin to look at how do, where do I want to start just practicing something every day? Small doses. We're not talking about taking a retreat somewhere, taking half of your work day. Five minutes here, five minutes there. I'm going to put some intention into my faith. As we close, you all can stand. I want you to see this, um, this poem, and we're going to go into our time of prayer. This poem says, Be the gardener of my soul, God. Spirit of the living God, be the gardener of my soul. For I long, for so I long, have been waiting, silent and still, experiencing a winter of the soul. But now... In the strong name of Jesus, I dare to ask, clear away the dead growth of the past. Break up the hard clods of custom and routine. Stir in the rich compost of vision and challenge. Bury deep in my soul the implanted word. Cultivate and water and tend my heart until new life buds open and flowers Amen. Amen. So as we close this time, I just want to um, have a time of prayer. If this, if this message hits you like it hit me and you're saying, God, I just need you to help me and give me the grace to really put some intention into my faith. And it starts with the soil. So God, will you just begin to take out all the rocks all the weeds, all the thorns that choke out the things that you want for me. God, begin to remove those things from the soil of my heart. Come on, begin to ask God, God, I'm sorry. I repent. God, begin to clear out 
If you're going to start any garden, you got to start with a, with a good space and the clean soil. God, remove all the things that are not conducive to growth. And God, I just want to come to you today asking that you would help me to be rooted and grounded in your glory. I want to be rooted in your character where no wind can blow me away, where no trial can pluck me away, where nothing can make you doubt, make me doubt you. I'm praying, God, for encounters and experiences, Lord, that will solidify my faith in you. God, I pray that you will continue to help me every day do something intentional in my faith. Help me to practice my faith. Help me to practice solitude. Help me to practice submission and guidance. Help me to practice, oh God, uh, worship and giving. Help me to practice meditating and, and fasting and prayer. Help me to practice these things. God, we just think that salvation is going to fall on us but it was actually a working out of our salvation. We have to work, work out. We have to live out our salvation. It just doesn't fall on us. Help us to live it. So I'm praying for all those. If that's prayers for you, won't you lift your hands in the air and say, God, here I am. God, I want to be rooted. I want to see more of your character. God, I want to be planted. I'm tired of being tossed and driven. God, I want to know for sure. God, I want to lean into my faith. I don't want it just to be a Sunday morning experience, but I want to spend every day with you somehow, some way. Every day with you, God. Every day with you. Every day, every day. So I pray over your people, God, that you would give us the grace to do it. It doesn't come from willpower. It doesn't care, come from us trying more, but it's your grace. So God, I breathe your grace over your people. God, I pray that you would give them, make it easy, God. Make it, let us do it from a heart of love. Not because we have to, but because it's a privilege to, it's an honor to spend time with you. It's an honor to grow. It's an honor to represent you. It's not because we have to. It's because we want to. We choose you, Jesus. So we thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank God. Come on, why don't you clap your hands and give God glory. God, we thank you that we will be rooted. Thank you that we will be disciplined. You're going to do a new thing in our hearts and our lives. Amen.